Mike test one good. One, two, one, two, check, check. I'm Shane Bergman. This is Impractical Brokers. I'm Jesse Roddinghouse. This is Impractical Brokers, where we're cutting through the bullshit, breaking down the gatekeeping in real estate and business, and discussing the impractical ways to be successful. Time out. You can cut that. Welcome to Impractical Brokers. Like, I mean, it's the fucking show, and then you can say... <laughs> All right, guys, today on Impractical Brokers, we have an amazing guest. Uh, he is rocking the mustache, thankfully. I think we talked yesterday That's about right. him shaving it off. Thankfully, he did not. His name is Chad Vaughn. He's been in real estate since 2018. He's an agent with Real Broker. Uh, super impressive, very consistent, and uh, he's also really funny. So we brought him on the show today to kind of talk about how he does content, uh, how he can maintain the speed and the rate and the consistency and curiosity in which he can put out this content, and then also just dive deep in a little bit of his backstories and just keep going with it. Yeah, so, so welcome Chad. to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, Chad. Hi, hello. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we do appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Um, and I think Jesse and I, when we were talking about you, super inspired by the way that you do your content and jumping straight into it, you talked about the type of content that you do is edutainment. 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 I was going to mess edutainment, up. Edutainment. I think is correct. Edutainment. Yeah, I think that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah. Where'd you get that term? Probably somebody else smarter than me. <laughs> I don't know. You you hear these things kind of floating around, and uh, but I mean that that really is what it is. It's I try to de deliver value um, like we all do, but also try to do it in a funny, entertaining way. You know, engaging. Yeah, and I think you do a really good job at that because um, you're. It, it appears like you're you're hitting trending audios, and then you're going on, and then you're laying over like pieces of valuable information and insight for people like buyers, sellers, right? Who's your target audience that you're- Yeah, primarily buyers and sellers. Um, my audience has changed over the last, especially in the last year, year and a half, um, where I have quite a bit of an agent following, where, so it's it's changed a bit, but my primary audience is buyers and sellers, that's right. Yeah. When you say that it's changed, like, like of course, uh, a lot of our peers follow mm -hmm. us, right? And right. they're getting more engaged and probably a ton more DMs from agents right. than actual buyers and yeah. sellers. But <laughs> but when that does, I mean, how does that resonate with you? Does it all of a sudden turn into that you're edumacationing edgeman, the, the hard, agent? I love that. Yeah, that's I know. But, but you know what I mean? Like, now yeah. are you, do you get a lot of just questions from agents or is there a, a, are you helping them or maybe they're asking about your brokerage or? Yeah, it's kind of all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, so, but at first I was like, that's not what I wanted to do. I was actually kind of like, how do I avoid <laughs> having right. all these agents following me? Like I didn't see the value in that. But what happened, what happened was, is that I started to get referral business from a lot of the agents. So what's what it's allowed me to do is remain top of mind, not just with people locally, but with agents all across the country. So it's not just, oh, I have you know relationships with agents within my brokerage across the country. It's there, are, I do have legitimate relationships on Instagram with other agents. And that's, I mean, one my biggest sale ever came from Instagram. Came, came from an Instagram agent. Referral. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's really cool the way that that's happened. And also being able to support and help other agents too, because I have had agents you know, reach out, like, how do I do this? How are, you know, whatever. Right. right. Um, so it's cool to be able to support them, but also it, it is a source of business for me too. With that, with that, um, yeah. with that referral business, mm -hmm. how, I mean, do you track that to where at this point you <laughs> kind of have an idea of mm -hmm. the percentage of referral business versus local or sphere or, you know what I mean? Like it's a good question. The correct answer is yes. Uh, the real answer is no. Uh, <laughs> just take a guess, a stab yeah. at it. Yeah, just a random. I mean, it doesn't have to be like. Um, I would say probably 15 to 25%. Well, that's fair. Um, that's so a fair minute. bit of my business yeah. um, in the last year was referral business, and a, a good bit of the volume was um, because, like I said, it was my highest sale last year. Um, yeah. And that particular client ended up buying two properties. Right. Um, so it was a lot, and there would probably be more because of that as well. So. Um, I don't know the exact amount, but it's it's a good bit of it. So I guess let's walk through that. So your highest sale last year, what was the, mm -hmm. that was a, a price point wise or what? Was uh, yeah, price point. Yeah. Okay. So you have you got that last year. How did the initial introduction happen? So you had an agent following you from what state? They reach out, kind of take it from well, there. Well, what was crazy, it wasn't even the agent that followed me. So it was an agent from Ohio that followed me and an agent in his office had a client that was buying a couple of vacation properties here in the Orlando area. 
And that agent connected to the agent in his yeah. office who said, oh, I know an agent in Orlando and that was me. Right. And then they tee up the client and then the rest is history. And the rest is history. Yeah. Which I think we're seeing, a, as you guys know, we're seeing a lot of that right now. And I mm-hmm. think that's sort of the trend where we're all becoming more social, more active. Right. And in an effort to get outside of our local markets and our spheres, because we are making an impact all over the place. And that's just incredible because it's just going to continue. And that's a business to focus on, Mm -hmm. you know, we're growing the 15 percent to 20 and then to 25 and then to 30, uh, which ultimately will grow that sphere in local business anyway. That's right. That's right. And And that is one of the things that some agents have contacted me like, I don't want all these agents following me. I'm like why yeah. it's amazing it's a great yeah. it's a great opportunity to network to and at some point i'm going to need somebody to somebody is going to move to ohio i'm going to need that agent again you know what i mean so it works both ways um it's a really cool opportunity. have you found since you bring that up which is perfect mm-hmm. and i run into this as well but have you how much have you referred out I found I find it is a little more challenging going yeah. like referring Florida business out than it yeah, is. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of outbound referrals right, right. recently. Everybody's coming here, it seems, at yeah. least uh, kind of in my sphere. But um, I have had some outbound referrals, but frankly, not from social. Yeah, which is but something I do, that we we talk about a lot because mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, you know, the thought of you know where we go into our business and it's mm-hmm. about giving, right? right. We want to give back, and right. it's. That's something very important to us to grow, to be able to give referrals out just as much as we get in, which is super challenging just because of yes. our, you know, our market or you know, the state we live in. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's right. But because I mean, I do know agents in a variety of markets where, where I would be comfortable referring business because I see the way that they I see the value that they offer and the way that they communicate what they what they put out and I can see their production too. So it's not just like, oh, they're doing stupid <laughs> dances on Instagram. It's they're actually providing real value and that's helpful, um, you know, in a way that I would also treat my clients so I feel comfortable with the hands and with the treatment that they would be getting as Speaking well. Speaking of dancing, are you gonna start incorporate dancing into your in your videos. Who knows? <laughs> Do you find that that has more of a... I don't think anybody wants to see me dance, but no. <laughs> now with the referral business, because that's interesting, because it sounds like you had a mind a mind shift, mm-hmm. uh, a mindset shift mm-hmm. to where you weren't focusing on agents and now it, it's like the content you're doing. Are you intentionally now making more content to say, hey, I want more referrals kind of deal or is it deeper than that? I, I'm not making content... Uh, that's kind of necessarily communicating directly that I want the referrals. I feel like most people already know, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like people know how to get in touch with you. They know what people in real estate, they know, I I don't need to tell it. I'm always accepting referrals. You know, of course I am. Everybody is. Um, So I think my, my goal is not necessarily communicating that directly, but just staying top of mind. Um, not just with clients, with my past clients, but also with those agents. And what was your mindset like before this shift? Like, so you had agents following you. You said, I don't necessarily want them to follow me. Like, what was the reason maybe why? Well, I said, I didn't, I didn't get it. So I was too new right. and I didn't understand the referral aspect of it. That that like, could be a like maybe it was a little more competitive. Like that make maybe you what you're doing there. Yeah. You're, you're, you're just like, that's your competitive advantage to a degree. Yeah, I just maybe I, subconsciously. I, just, I was just focused on local. So I'm like, yeah. okay, how because when I started, I knew that Instagram, I knew social media was gonna be my my thing because mm-hmm. I knew how to do it from past experience. Um, but like I was working full time, you know, I was like, and I don't have I don't have the capacity to do the things that we should be doing to get new business. Um, and so I was just really focused on building a local following and getting deals basically from <clears throat> from Instagram. So I didn't I didn't see how that translated with with agents. Um, so but now I do see the value because it's not just about it's networking, it's, you know, referral business and it's, you know, talking about the brokerage and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunity there um, in a really interesting kind of organic way. And you like briefly touched on past experience. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the most interesting things about real estate is the three of us in this room, we all did things before real estate mm-hmm. and then reading the notes before it, you were pretty deep in, it seemed like philanthropic, philanthropic yeah. work. And I want to know, you know, what that was like. And then also the segue into real estate. Cause I think that that's pretty interesting. Well, it's funny cause real estate was something, I mean, I've always thought about real estate. Um, it's kind of always been one of those things that I've been inclined towards or interested in, but 
I guess I, I, I think I was, I was too afraid that I was not, I was going to mess it up. Mm. <laughs> and so I just talked myself out of it, you know? And so I was always in nonprofit work um, for most of my life, um, from starting in high school all the way through college and after. Um, and I did a lot of different things um, from working in schools to working at various nonprofits and stuff like that. And I just, I was a bad employee. <laughs> well, I was a good employee, but I didn't like being an employee. Yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't like working on somebody else's terms, um, which is really funny when you have real estate agents say that because that's literally the, oh, that's yeah. how our lives go yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Several I did Several employees. I did it like that that 8 to 5 life and I just I realized that it wasn't it wasn't ever the job, it was just that lifestyle um, that was never so you didn't realize that jumping from the eight to five lifestyle to the eight to eight, eight, to eight baby, yeah, yeah, yeah no, twenty four right. seven, yeah, nonstop, yeah. yeah. And now, how do you feel about it? Uh, it feel great. Yeah, it's they, awesome. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and you, so, is your wife in real estate at all? No, she's a teacher. Okay. And is there clear separation? Has she maybe wanted to get involved? And you're like, don't or well, that was actually that? my fi- the that was like the final thing of me getting my license because she knew that she knew that I was supposed to get into real estate. Like she just that wifely instinct, I yep. guess, and she knew that. So eventually, she was like, "If you don't go get your freaking real estate license, I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go get one myself." So I was like, yes, ma'am. And I went and got my license. So um, she's been very super supportive um, of that. And uh, I I don't think any real estate agent at a certain capacity can do what they do without strong support, especially, you know, when when there's a family involved, you, you have to have that. And so she's she's really been she is why I'm successful. For sure, there's always 100%. a strong percent, which is backer. which is awesome too. Talking about experience mm-hmm. because the, when you get into there, it's funny because the people that are newer in the business, let's say three to five, mm-hmm. whatever, it's almost like the grind or the hustle is even greater than the ones that say that are 15, 20, that kind of be like, oh, well, I, I have such a huge fear sure. and referral network or like referrals from past clients, mm-hmm. not referral network, but you know, maybe that hustle and maybe the, the gap between technology and whatever. So it's, I mean, you find that like when you got in this, were you immediately jumping into social and, and, and like doing I was building my Instagram in pre-licensing class. So I'm like, I, I'm like, this is first of all, this is stupid. Yeah, <laughs> like, wow. there's, I, I could tell that at that point, like, this, I, I knew what was happening there, and it was not equipping me to become a real estate agent. So I said, what I can do, what's more valuable with my time, is to start building my network. So that's exactly what I did. Mm-hmm. I sat in the back row of class, and I started on my Instagram, just building a lot. Because I started with like, it was my personal Instagram, it was like yeah. 50, 60 yeah. people on it. it was, you know, it was just, yeah, just average start Instagram. Somewhere, yeah. Um, so I started then, you know, adding local people, kind of developing a local following. And that's where I was very hyper focused on people in my town because we were new here. I didn't know anybody in central Florida beyond a handful of people. Um, so I didn't have a network. Um, so I figured this is the perfect way I can get in front of these people, you know, easy peasy. Yeah. And where did your first deal come from? Instagram. And, uh, and Instagram poll. <sighs> Talk. An Instagram, <laughs> an Instagram. Yeah. So I put a connection a, you had, like someone you already knew. No. But no, total new. no, perfect stranger. And I mean, we're still in contact today. We're still friends. And that that's a great thing. Like that's Instagram awesome. allows us to maintain the relationship. So it was it was a poll at some point, something of like, I think I probably heard it from a Tom Ferry or yeah, Antana yeah. podcast. This or is whatever. in 2018, we'll say, or? It was 2018. Okay. So it was, it was a poll, something to the effect of like, are you living in your dream house now? Would you like to start? Or <laughs> something <laughs> yeah. like that. But they res- uh, this guy responded to the poll. And so when somebody responds on something, that's a, that's a green light. That's a hand raise. Like, yeah. I'm interested in engaging in the conversation. So actually, my first two buyers came from uh, two separate polls uh, that I did on that, where they were people that I didn't have a personal connection to. They were just people that I found and found me through Instagram. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. That's and then I guess that probably sold you on like, oh shit! I like, oh, probably, this works. Yeah, I should probably. I'm going to do yeah. this more. Yeah, dive in. <laughs> and then at what point and did you start becoming super intentional and consistent with the content that you're putting out? Because are you are you a daily content guy? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much at mm-hmm. this point. How long have you been? daily uh, since i started i i i kind of look at instagram like that's my office um if i am not active on instagram i'm not showing up to work and so i just have ingrained that that is just a choice and it's a discipline mm-hmm. um, and it's not that i don't ever 
step back, I do. Um, but really, I haven't until like this year. Um, but every single day, it was being hyper consistent, um, just relentless curiosity. Um, that was that was <laughs> Can that you was spell that chant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, but that like people are like, how do you, how, like, what's the secret? Like yeah. there is no secret. It's just showing up. It's just, it's making a decision that I'm going to do it and then actually executing on that decision. So executing on the decision. Yeah. It's amazing. I love that. But, but that's your office. Mm -hmm. No, hundred percent. Because here's the deal. I've never knocked on a door. I've never done a cold call. And it's not that those things are wrong or bad. They're, they're fine. They, they work, they're effective, but it's just not something that I'm, willing to do time over, <laughs> you know time over time yeah, yeah it's just yeah. it's just not for me and that's fine um, but so i knew i know that if i'm not going to do those things then i have to do this thing at scale and i think that that's where people <clears throat> get get it twisted where they think that they can throw something up on instagram here or there and get good results from it but what they don't realize is like i've been posting this stuff on every single day for four and a half years you know without really without any significant pause, you know, more than 24 hours. Um, and that's what it takes to be successful on that platform. Right. So it's fair to say actually that your the majority of your business was all came from that because if it did, absolutely, I mean, a, a minute amount would mm -hmm. have been just someone that knew you, but right. was, but started following you and whatever, right. you know, so most, all well, and, that, and that's the thing, even like with sphere. So when I was working, like I was working in an office job for the first two, two and a half years of working in real estate. So anybody I met, like you're getting on my Instagram. Um, cause I'm not going <laughs> to sit at work talking to you about buying and selling a house. It's inappropriate, but you can see me on Instagram. You can see me on Facebook and you, you, you will not miss me. I can promise you that you're yeah. going to see me on there. Mm -hmm. So what does a routine look like? So showing up to the office, Instagram mm -hmm. office, um, you're shooting daily. I want to kind of get into gear and then maybe like notes, structure, et cetera. So the ideas you, you come out, so that's a, that's a lot of ideas. Do you carry notes? Do you have notes? How do you come up with the ideas? Yeah. So sometimes I do. I, <laughs> I have never been consistent about banking ideas, but I have kept a notebook at points where I've, you know, different conversations or, uh, usually problems or issues that we run into with a transaction or, you know, with another agent or whatever, well, or I'll jot that down. Um, but it's usually anything that I'm posting or creating content about, it's something that I'm either reading, reading about on a blog, or I've heard about on a different podcast or something like that. Um, in fact, I mean, that's where all my stuff originally came from, because I've had a lot of agents too reach out to me like, I'm new, like, I don't know what to post. I mean, when I was new, I was getting like six emails a day of different articles and blogs yeah. and this and that. And so I would take that information and just regurgitate it with my own voice, you yeah. know? So, you know, whatever. Zillow wants to tell me that black doors sell at the highest price point. Awesome. I can make a piece of content about that. I don't have to sell a house to know that. That's fact. Right. You know, so that that is exactly what I would do. And so I still do that today. So the natural progression of when you started it, right, four mm -hmm. years ago, it, I mean, obviously reels weren't as big then. So they weren't were a you thing. just even a thing, yeah. Right, yeah. even a thing. So Crazy. were you just posting a story? Because I mean, it was Instagram. Mm -hmm. So were you? It was just the post inside the. You know, back when we were allowed to put post. pictures on right. Instagram. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the grid, <laughs> yeah. the grid style. Yeah. Was it one of those? I mean, or like, because when you say a poll, because the poll would have been on the story, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, polls like came it wasn't out an IG story. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, stories were new yeah. to Instagram at that point. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they had if they came out during that year, but they were still new. Um, so I was kind of getting used to that because that's a different, that's another, that's a different cadence or curiosity, mm -hmm. yeah. um, of, you know, getting into that, uh, and that's a different style of post, a different way of posting. But yeah, I mean, that was back in the day where we could just put a picture on Instagram and it was terrible. My first posts were awful. Like when I go Are back still at, up. I, probably yeah, yeah. If, you, if, you scroll, if you scroll if you scroll far the enough they're terrible we'll just make sure we get yeah Chad's don't, don't scroll OG down if you, 2018 yeah yeah <laughs> don't look at those but yeah. they're 1500 <laughs> posts earlier <laughs> with three likes but i mean honestly like a lot of them were um stock photography like they're terrible right um but you're probably just following trends that people were telling you to do like you have to use this kind of structure and use this frame and this text. I was just doing whatever I could do to be there. Do something, you yeah. know, because, and again, I was working in an office. I was working, I was in a 
four by four cubicle, you know, what am I going to do? So I would grab pictures off of Google or Pinterest or whatever, and I would create a piece of content around that. It was, to, it was terrible. Try to find the right filter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right yeah, filter. exactly. Ooh, black and white. It's yeah, moody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Very cool. No, it's such a cool like leap. And, and it only, it, like four, four or five years, like you've been mm -hmm. going on and you have a very substantial following on your account. Was there a point where you had exponential growth or has it always yeah. been consistently pretty steady as far as obtaining followers? Like one year. Yeah. Just jumped I mean, it was probably, me. probably in 2020, 2021 where my following grew a lot. And that's where a, a lot of it grew with agents. Um, it was actually with reels. Reels is what really grew my account. Yes. Um, I wasn't as early of an adopter as I should have been mm -hmm. or could have been, mm -hmm. but once I did start adopting, that's where I really started seeing a lot of growth. Um, in my with regards following. to the follows and, mm -hmm. and engagement. And, that's right. Yeah. And are there, are there any tactics that you still use to this day that maybe you've A and B tested where like you, like trending audio has been a thing where people talk about right. it and then it's like, no, or original audio seems to do better. Are there things that you're doing in your content that you've noticed that are getting you more views and vis-a-vis -vis more followers? Well, I think it's the thing with social, in my opinion, is it's not one or two. It's all the things um, you have to pick from the entire menu of options because there are some people that love a trending audio, you know, and the fact is that trending audios do work. Mm -hmm. So whether or not, you know, I mean, you can find an Instagram guru that's going to tell you anything that you want to find and, you know, whatever. Um but the fact is that they are effective and they do work. But um, I've tried and I've tried to be more intentional about switching it up, too, because I do think that the uh, people's taste for trending audio is beginning to change as well. Um, so trying to incorporate more of the original audio where it's just my voice and talking um, and those mm -hmm. things do get less less views so if you look at just the metrics of it like oh my god it's getting like a quarter of the views of like this trending <laughs> yeah. one but at the end of the day like that's still hundreds or thousands of people that are hearing my voice with my face that are connecting with me like psychologically what they're doing is they're building relationship with mm -hmm. me um, and so at some point that that will translate to something, mm -hmm. whether it's a agent to agent relationship or business uh, from a buyer or seller. Do you get caught up in the vanity metrics? Um, I can. Yeah. And is what do you have anything in your head where you're like, like, how do you prevent it? Um, I just don't <laughs> <laughs> try not to look at it. You know, I, I think it's it's hard because Instagram has Instagram is always changing. You know, you hear yeah. people ranting about the algorithm always changing. That's true. You know, so where a year and a half ago, I could expect a certain threshold of views on any of my reels, like no matter what, where now it's like, it's, that's not the case anymore. You're not getting those views naturally. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not, those things don't really matter if they're not translating to business. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's not eventually becoming money, like the view, what what is the value in having 20,000 views if if it actually doesn't come to anything so uh, with with instagram which that clearly mm -hmm. sounds like that's probably the lead 100 the lead lead contributor yes. for you right mm -hmm. <laughs> some weird way of saying yeah. that but um what are the like obviously we have a whole bucket of ones that we use right mm -hmm. where we can use but you spend most of your time with instagram right yeah. so there's facebook twitter whatever <laughs> um but are you seeing like now because it's it's interesting for us mm -hmm. where we're we're trying to you know, still stay connected, but stay relevant too, right? So are you switching a little bit now to YouTube shorts? Are you, be, I've seen that you yeah. you did do a little bit. I actually posted one. I tried mm -hmm. to tag you, but I couldn't oh. tag you. I tried, <laughs> yeah. but I, I didn't, but you know, that's a big talking point too, yeah. um, of just, you know, additional relevancy really, mm -hmm. you know, of, of being out there. So are you starting to do you dance around with multiple ones or are you just pretty stay focused? Like I'm pretty focused Instagram. on Instagram. Instagram is my bread and butter. Yeah. Um, and I don't really see that changing. Um, even though Instagram is busier and it's louder, mm -hmm. I don't see it becoming a less an unrelevant platform anytime soon. Yeah. Um, for sure. So 
Instagram will be my bread and butter probably for the indefinite future. I have started to play with other things like um, like YouTube, like TikTok, yeah. but I also understand, I mean, I, I'm a content creator, but I'm also a real estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> right, know? but so, there's also a scale. The lines are blurring. You yeah, know, like so when, you hear, scale, when you hear Gary Vee talking right. about, hey, if you're not on TikTok, get on TikTok. Right. I understand that, but also there's a scalability issue. Like we, like, I, I can't be on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and it, it's only me, right? Or if it's, I mean, we're gonna dive into it because I do wanna ask questions yeah. on that, but. I'm a pretty big believer that if I'm not gonna do it well, then I'm not really interested in doing it. Um, so I, I I have put some of the videos on TikTok, but I, like I, I I don't enjoy TikTok myself. Mm -hmm. um, so if I don't enjoy it, like my heart's not in it, like uh, whatever, <laughs> I, I'm just not, I'm just not into it. Right. Instagram, I enjoy, I consume, it's where I go for social media. Yeah. Um, so that's, and I think that's part of it. Like you have to enjoy what you're doing, but the scalability of it to your point is, it's just me. I don't yeah, have somebody shooting. I don't have somebody editing. I don't have somebody posting. It is anything that comes on any of my channels is from me. Um, so I don't have the ability to do all of the things at a high level or with excellence. So if I can't do it well, I'm not really interested in doing it. So YouTube, yes, especially with some of the, the listing videos, um, that I've been trying to, uh, do more of, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I wouldn't say build out YouTube, but have a better presence. A little there. body of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I mean, I want to jump into that because I'm sure we're going to transition into this, but the YouTube thing, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I had for you, which is I've seen some of you mm -hmm. doing some of the, the, the speed walkthroughs and some of the other listing videos. Inspired so, by Shane. Brooklyn. Yes. Right. So yes. aren't we all yes. inspired by my, Shane? My, my yeah. birthday brother. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give to you. <laughs> yes. But, but when you go, so like, let's, let's just dive into the logistics of that, right? Mm -hmm. We get a listing and we're going to do the listing photos. Mm -hmm. Is, is, is that when, like when you go to do listing, I presume that you hire a listing photographer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So they come in to do the professional photography at that point. Now, are you, cause you have the house and it's in its best, mm -hmm you know, stage, are you then at that point doing some video mm -hmm. for you're grabbing content on your own with your iPhone? Do you bring someone? Does your, does your photographer go ahead and capture some stew and they're converting to video? Like, yeah, they do it all. Um, so they I've, handle all of it for yeah, you. Yes. Yeah. So I actually just recently switched over to a different company that does do those videos in particular. I found them on Instagram, go figure. Um, and so <laughs> that's where we connected. And I saw what they were doing. I was like, yes, I, I love that. It looks great. It's sleek. And you know, again, I, I don't know how to do that well myself. Um, so I would rather pay somebody to do it. And yeah, it's it's already done. My, you know, I've already uh, encouraged my sellers to have it in the best, the home in the best shape possible. So it's already there. So we do it all. So on time. that particular time, when you get there, I mean, there's probably, I don't want to say an infinite amount of content that can mm -hmm. be produced from it. Uh, it's probably finite to a degree, but you're, but the amount that you're, I mean, you have a, it's a full length YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, you have your reel, you have mm -hmm. a video you put out on like, tell me like, what are some of those things? Yeah. So like, I mean, like obviously the content pieces. Yeah. So I mean, obviously the photos, I mean, that's, sure. you know, you have to have that. Yep. Um, then the MLS, uh, unbranded tour. Yep. So, you know, just a so video no one. one's in that one, right? That's right. Okay. And then a branded tour. Um, so basically the same thing with me giving an intro and an outro, yep. um, which will go on my, my YouTube or whatever. Um, I don't really post that on Instagram. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like it plays well there. Right. Um, and then, uh, the speed walkthrough, mm -hmm. I call them the 60 second sh 60 second showings. They're really yeah, good that's too, a by the way, like oh, you, you. for the, you've done three, two, three, yeah, I mean, two, yeah. Like pr I can see the progression occurring in them. So they're really well I've done. gotten very good at waving. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, I know. <laughs> but like, so you, you like that, right? Yeah, no, it's good, man. You're, yeah. you're definitely like you're quick learn and you're filming your content. I mean, think back to that, like you don't have a production team. So right. everything. Well, when, when it gets to a listing yeah. that is produced. Yeah. That is, that, that is, is the only team. thing that's produced. Right. And even that, I mean, they're, they're shooting that on a phone, you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, they so, are. Yeah. A hundred percent. That, no that kidding. walkthrough is done on a phone. Oh, wow. You know, they'll, they'll go in and edit it. Sure. I don't know how, and frankly, I don't want to, that's what I'm <laughs> no, yeah. to do. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, so they so do it all. A couple of things logistically yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. So the turnaround time, let's say for those content pieces, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to name the company, but mm -hmm. what's, what's what's the turnaround time? I can tell you. Never yeah, I don't don't say uh, that. No. <laughs> uh, trade secrets. Trade yeah. secrets. <laughs> no, but like a turnaround time. Like I get them the next day. 
Next the next day. day? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, we need to. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was one of the. Oh my gosh. When they when Connor, they told me that? <laughs> <laughs> the next. <laughs> when they told me it was a twenty four hour turnaround, I was like, oh my god, yeah. So that, that is incredible. Yeah, that really won't last good. long though. Yeah. So, so then it won't. That's why I'm not giving out the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next day, exactly. Yeah, that's what's what, happening. Right? Everybody, yeah, they're exactly. like, they find someone. They're like, yeah. don't, we can't share. I can't share. Yeah. And you found um, them on Instagram. You said, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Just we could just, we could just backtrack. <laughs> we could just figure gonna, it out. Just look at his yeah. followers and figure yeah, it out. Yeah. When I go look at his post from 2018, <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you guys. Um, so the so that's a turnaround time for that. Um, wow, 24 hours. I had another question. All the things, the photos, photos, all the videos, everything. Oh, I know. All the marketing collateral that every agent should be doing on a listing is done. 100. percent So my next question with regards to that was a cost we all know that everybody's cost is different like in the market right like Mm -hmm. i'm just curious what that roughly it's high um so it's about i think for the last one i paid about 750 for all all of that yeah yeah so quality content it's just about as immediate turnaround as you could possibly get um, for really high quality stuff so it is a higher price point but like that's not only marketing for the property, but for me, yeah, of course. you know, how you do yeah. anything is how you do everything. So mm-hmm. my sellers, I, I would hope any savvy client is going to go and look at what you've produced previously. So In your portfolio. Yeah. hundred mm-hmm. percent. So that, that lives on my, on all the things, you know, forever, um, as, as a portfolio, as a resume. Well, and then what's next? So are, are you building out maybe like production goals for next year, like different, maybe styles of content? Are there other things you want to implement? Yes. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like he didn't want to talk I know, about it. I like, don't know. Trade secret. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I think that I don't know. I don't know that I really have a good answer to that. Um, I've never been like, I'm not a super, I don't have like these big, massive goals. Um, I would just want, I want to continue getting better. Um, And with, because a lot of my business lives on social, it changes, you know? So a lot of that is uh, in a position of being reactive to what's happening kind of in that environment and, um, and adapting. So, so not growing a team, you're not interested in growing a team really or anything like that. That, That's not in your, no, no. No, it's not. Um, I I love being able to support and mentor agents, but not in like a rainmaker type of capacity. It's just not something that I'm necessarily interested yeah. in. There are those that love that. Hundred percent. That don't. Yeah. 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 That's a really good answer. Thank you. You're a very genuine guy. I mean, it's something that I. It's all I got. I know. You're just a lot better person than I am. <laughs> <laughs> So is there anybody that um, that um, that you would recommend or suggest with regards to, you know, social or that we should, you know, invite on the show at some point besides Sarah Hand? I know you said Sarah Hand, which Sarah Hand was already on our list. Yeah, I loved your answer. Yeah. Sarah Hand or bust. Like, that's just incredible. It stands. But it stands. <laughs> Dang. OK, that's fair enough. Challenge accepted. Yeah. And I, but like, I mean, one of the things in there and I'm, I'm sure you look up to other agents. Sure. You, I feel like you I feel like you had to drop my name. You didn't. Um, but are there other agents out there where maybe like we don't follow that could inspire us? I think that's where a lot of my ideas yeah. come from watching other agents us. do yeah. it. Yeah. So there's a lot of great agents that do really great work. Um, Hannah Smith, I think is the, the uh, she has the property geek. Okay. Um, great stuff. Uh, Ruthie Taylor, uh, Chris Perry, um, Bethany Nolan. There's a lot of really great agents that put out really good content. Um, and so th- those are all agents that I look to and glean um, ideas from and inspiration. But I think that one of the most important things for agents to do is actually look outside of real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. what happens is we start looking within other agents and we're all producing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like <laughs> for you to stand out, I think you have to, to produce good content, I think you have to consume content at a high level too. So to understand what's actually happening on the platform, not just in your own real estate bubble, but outside of that. Yeah. That's a good point. I was just watching something yesterday and was talking about that, how we we absorb so much content. Yeah. It might have been a massive agent that was talking about it. We absorb so much content, we can almost predict like the way that we're going to produce it and right. the demeanor and the way that we talk. And and I'm sure you've been doing this long enough to where you know exactly what the out, you know, the produced piece is gonna look like. Hundred yeah. percent. And so when you're when you're filming on your phone, you're framing it, you already know where the text is gonna mm-hmm. go. Like you gotta be a pro at it. It'd be fun to kind of watch you do it. 
It's very unimpressive. <laughs> it's just me in front of my window. But you're with so, my phone. I'm sure you're so like <laughs> used to, you've put in so many reps with it that you're, you, I mean, and again, talk about the curiosity of it. Like you Love have that. to be extremely skilled and you probably haven't realized like how fucking fluid you are. I'm very good at lip syncing. <laughs> it's a gift. That's a trick. <laughs> it's a gift. Do you do that on like two X? <laughs> <or> <laughs> you, do you, you have to like double the speed or how do you actually? No. You do it at like yeah. a one X speed? Yeah. No, no thanks. I Counter. mean, sometimes you do it like 67 times, but you know, <laughs> they don't see all those. Well, it's amazing stuff. We got some like fun questions we're going to ask at the end. We're going to like real quick go through them. Sweet. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we might so, have time to cover on there. Quickly, Je Jesse, before we get in the rapid questions, we have- <laughs> Don't want to get in the weeds. Um, with your, like your capacity, you know, with where you're comfortable at this point and growing your business and where, how does that, it's, it is just you, you mm -hmm. handle all your video content, editing, what have you, outside of what we talked about with the listing. But do you have an assistant and you like, is that as far as the team goes or you handle all your own stuff, no assistance? I utilize a TC okay, on my transactions, transactions. Okay. Yeah, but not- Beyond not, that, it's all you. That's right. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like editing stuff, I mean, are, what, what do you use for editing? What's your- what, Instagram. What, what, oh, Everything for, is in, in app. Mm -hmm. So I, like when you grab your phone and you'll take a quick whatever, you take your video and then you just throw it into into Instagram and edit it all right in there in the reels. Yeah, yeah. There's really nothing fancy about Beyond my that. process. Oh. Wow, all. that's yeah. um, I'm not using another that's platform really, yeah. to create captions or to do anything fancy. And I, I would like to. I think I've actually even asked you about captions before. Yeah. But again, capacity wise, I'm like I done is better than perfect, right? So I would just that's I just right. want it to be out there. Um, and if I, if I'm too fixated on it being a particular way, first of all, I'm going to end up looking like every other agent in the first place mm -hmm. and it's just not going to get done. So I'd rather it get done. Um, so yeah, everything I do, I, I, every single reel is filmed in Instagram, edited in Instagram. I think one time for like a particular type of transition, I did a different app. Um, but everything is right through the app. Wow. Yeah. So, it's so any of the creators out there that impressive. are, I think people get maybe concerned about having to buy gear <laughs> or all these other things and hiring people for it. So Chad, big following, been doing it four years, get a ton of business from it and it's all done. All your social is done within your phone, even down to the editing. That's every bit of it. Amazing. Yeah. When it comes to posting, right? Like, mm -hmm. cause you, you, you say, which is just phenomenal that Instagram's your office, right? Mm -hmm. So how long are you in your office each day? Do you think? Not that long. Three hours. Uh, I mean, oh I mean, no. Do you have it carved out? Like, do you time block it so it's between X and X? Um, loosely. Um, usually, well, in we the, have family and kids and all that. Yeah, so I mean, usually, like in the evenings, I will scroll to kind of get some ideas and kind of see what's consume. what mm -hmm. consume. Yes, that's where you know I look at like what's trending. What you know, try to get some ideas. I'll save some stuff, and then in the morning, um, you know, once everybody, once I start my day, uh, my work day, um, I'll usually try to create one to if i'm really good three reels um but usually it's one to two at a time one to two per day yeah and you post both every day no or it depends okay no, so like, like i'll bank it up them. yeah yeah, okay. yeah like okay. this morning i did two um you know so i have another one that's you know ready to go so you make it in instagram then you just save it to your mm -hmm. photos and then save it in drops yeah, yeah. And dro okay which is going to lead us right into our first rapid fire <laughs> question <laughs> All right. Dun, dun, so dun. as far as content goes, batching or spontaneous? Spontaneous. Yeah, that was a fast. That was rapid. Wow. That was rapid. <laughs> you said rapid. I, I, God, just I didn't even finish the question, obedient. Chad. <laughs> Not God. even ready for the All right, ready? <laughs> Read receipts on or off? Oh, off. You You're psycho. Whoa. I saw your video. You're That's savage. psychotic. I'm not doing that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Not a single chance. I'm going to convert your ass. Not a single yeah. chance. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay. <laughs> iPhone or off-brand? iPhone. That's good. Good, That's answer. Savage. good answer. And uh, best day to list? Thursday. That's a good answer, too. What's the worst day to list? Tuesday. Fuck yeah. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we, we, we were going to ask this one to yeah. some people. Do you follow the broke agent? I do. Why? I don't just know. That wasn't part of That's the question. That's a great question. Yeah, that was, that that was, was, a part that of, was not a It was really just a curious, like, do you follow the broke yeah, agent? You, you said yes. I, I think they I think they they put out some really good ideas and and good uh engaging fun yeah. But Eric's been putting out a lot of like content ideas like the the newsletter he just dropped mm -hmm. October 1 about Halloween ideas. Like yeah. that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys, that was a great conversation with Chad. Uh, we really do genuinely appreciate your time here today and uh, all the answers and responses you gave us. You get, I mean, there's a ton of advice and it's super inspiring to know that someone at your level and as successful as you are, start, like the way that you do your content is just incredible, man. So we're proud to have you here. And I just want to say thank you. And it's uh, been a pleasure to meet you and uh, find out that we were birthday buddies, man. December birthday 29th. Times. Love that. <laughs> Love that for us. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, man. Seriously. Yeah. And guys. to close, done is better than perfect. That's right. Which is my take. Every day. Awesome. Thank you. So we talked a lot about Instagram. What's the best way for people to find you, Chad? Definitely Instagram at Chad A. Vaughn, B-A-U-G-H-A-N. The extra A. So many A's in there. A lot of A's. Yeah, so got to have A's. the A in there. A plus though. Yes. A plus. Yeah. Thanks, man. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you.